Sorry, I tried filming this about an hour ago. Because I'm struggling so much with my PTSD, I can't string sentences together, I can't conjure up the English language. I conjure up something, just not the English language. And I was trying to film this over and over again. I went away and thought, I can't do it. I can do this. I can do this. PTSD rules a lot of my life. We're gonna try and push through it for this video. I want to talk about my album because it's been a while. I really want to be able to look back on these videos and remember the progress that I made and the hard journey that this is because it's really hard. I have completed just over half of my album. There are seven tracks that I have finished. I have finished, mastered, produced seven tracks. Some of which have already been released, but I have just remastered them and redone some vocals. On one of the tracks, which is Nothing To You, which has been released and is on Spotify, if you would like to go save it and support. I re-recorded all of those vocals, all of them. I remastered the entire track. I mucked around with the levels. It's different now and I feel a lot better about it. I have... <laughs> I have made an intro track. When I was making this track, which is called Memorial, by the way. Um, when I was starting this track, it was meant to be a full track and it was meant to be Can't Let It Go, which is also a song I released a long time ago on my YouTube channel but took down because the mastering was pretty bad. I really didn't know what I was doing. So I really wasn't pleased with it. But I released that track a long time ago and a lot of you did really enjoy it. Maybe I'm just too hard on myself. Anyway, need to re-record that whole thing. And the intro track was me trying to funk up that song. It was meant to be Can't Let It Go, but just in a completely different version. Completely different, just really not me. I wanted to make a track that was so not me that you would think, what the fuck? I really wanted to test my musical ability with that. Started putting the vocals to it and I realized I don't enjoy this. This track is not meant to be with these vocals. It's not right. Took all of the vocals off. I was left with this instrumental that I thought was really cool. This is just my personal opinion. You're probably not going to think the same thing. Maybe. Maybe. I loved the instrumental and I thought, what the fuck do I do with this? <laughs> Putting vocals to something that really isn't your style is just a whole other experience. I was just sitting down listening to the instrumental over again, over again, and then I just started singing along to it. It's an intro track because there's not too much to it. It's just kind of a celebration of the fact that I'm making an album. You're about to hear the rest of it and I am so fucking excited. Let's celebrate before you hear the rest. It's a little bit of a feel good celebration song and it doesn't mean that much, but it's something I'm really proud of because I've done harmonies on it. I've built it up to something. I've made something I didn't think I could make, which is very out of my comfort zone. The style of it is just not me. The fact that I did that track is something I'm really proud of. I was not expecting to have an intro to the album. So the first thing that you're gonna hear is something that kind of just happened. That baby was a beautiful surprise in my life. <laughs> There's a whole album coming after that. Ooh! Holy fuck, okay. I don't swear very often, and I've had people tell me this, Paris if you're watching, Paris knows. I don't swear very often, and when I do, it's cause I'm really excited or really not okay. You pick whichever you think that this is. We're going to be talking about the progress of the album, where it's at right now, not where it's going to be because things can really change. Like I just said, I made an intro track. I didn't think I was going to make an intro track. So there are gonna end up being songs that I probably cut out completely and that I don't include, which is gonna be sad, but I really wanna be proud of this. I want this to be something I love myself. So if there are songs that end up just feeling wrong for the album. I'm gonna listen to that. This is crooked, I'm so sorry. <laughs> sorry, coffee does a lot of things to me. The first full track of this album after the intro is Yellow Rose. Now, I haven't recorded this yet. I haven't 
fully recorded it. I have only posted a live version on my YouTube channel from years ago and I released it the day before my blind audition was aired on TV. So this was a long time ago. My voice is very different now and it's kind of insane listening to me sing that song then and then hearing myself sing it now. The difference in my voice is quite incredible. Whether it changed for better or for worse, <laughs> we don't know. It's good YouTuber sets up camera and it's not stable. You can see 18 year old me singing it with my guitar on my ex-boyfriend's floor. Uh, <laughs> I'll link it in the description. So many people have watched that video. I think it's the most viewed video on my YouTube channel, which is crazy. I think it was the second song I ever wrote on guitar. That song for some reason is scaring me and I'm putting off recording it because it is the biggest song I've made so far to everyone, so. I have written out placement reasons for myself why every song is in what place but I will talk to you about that once the album is out because I don't know what songs are going to be taken out and I don't know what new songs are going to be put in. There are reasons as to why the songs are in the places that they're in which I think is quite crucial if you want to create some kind of atmosphere, some kind of soundscape. I think it's important to place things really delicately, like you're creating this beautiful little universe. For me, it's crucial that everything has a reason and a purpose, not just chucked on the album wherever willy-nilly. I am going to be so much more proud of it if I know that the songs complement each other in some strange wacky way. A lot of the music on this album is going to sound so different from each other because I am experimenting a lot. I guess sounds from artists that have influenced me for a very long time but I wouldn't necessarily write like, but I've always wanted to try. This album has forced me to grow so much as an artist because of the way that music is going nowadays and also because of my style and trying to get the two to cooperate has been a challenge, but also I think I have developed a really unexpected style for me. And I don't know what it is yet. I don't know what my style is, but I'm figuring it out and I'm a lot closer to knowing, but just be prepared for a lot of songs to sound different. <laughs> it's not what you'd expect from me, I guess. So I just hope that people enjoy it. It sounds like it's not me, a lot of it, but it is. I'm figuring out what I like and dislike. Ways of using my voice as well that I would not have expected. Different tonalities in my voice. I'm learning different placements. There's a softness to my voice that I didn't know about until very recently. I have quite a deep, rich, kind of loud sounding voice and I've always disliked it because I've thought it's masculine and it's not gentle and soft and feminine and high pitched and it's not graceful, it's more jazzy and like clunky and <laughs> rich sounding. I'm starting to find that there are actually so many different colours to my voice, it's not just jazzy sounding, it's not just rich, it can also be soft and light and playful, fun and bubbly. It can be everything that I have wanted it to be. I didn't think I would learn so much about myself in making this album and to be honest, I didn't know I had until I'm saying this to the camera. Making videos helps, filming yourself helps, do it. <laughs> Third song on the album is Dead. I am going to be completely re-recording this song. I sound very young in the recording that I have released, which is on my Spotify as well if you would like to save it. I recorded that when I was living in the share house that I was in and it honestly makes me angry and sad because in the background I can hear the person that sexually harassed me banging doors and walking down the hallway and laughing and it makes me sad and I didn't want him at all to feature anywhere near this album. I lived in a share house for a year and five months I believe and I was sexually harassed that entire time as a 19 year old by a 35 year old. I'm gonna re-record it. As well as, because I want my now voice on the album, I want to commemorate the past as my present self and not have it sound like I don't sound, I guess. So I'm redoing that whole thing. That's also scaring me. Ah, it made me pull out my baritone ukulele the other day though. My baritone ukulele is sitting just there. I have not played that thing since I last recorded Dead. That was about a year ago. This album is making me do things. <laughs> yes. <laughs> 
fourth song is going to be a cover, I think. This is something I'm unsure about. I remember when I first discovered Birdie, she did a lot of covers on her album and she redid songs that she loved. Still like that idea, but I don't know if I want that to be on my album. Nowadays, you don't hear people doing covers on their albums. It's just them. This song has been with me for a few years now. Love the film's Twilight. I love the Twilight films. I'm sorry. I'm gonna say it. It's a guilty pleasure of mine, but I love it. I love Twilight. Um, I was actually watching it last night. There is a song called Possibility by Like Lee in New Moon. It's a very sad song, but it is so beautiful. The way that the album flows, that song honestly fits as the fourth song on the album. Let me know in the comments how you would feel about a cover being on an album. I know that this is my album and I can put whatever the fuck I want on it. I also do want to listen to what you think as well regarding that one thing because I'm unsure about it. I do love this song though. It would be nice. Ooh, I don't know. So many people used to put covers on their albums, like multiple covers. I think on that album by Birdie, she had two covers, two or three. The fifth song on the album is Nothing To You and that is also already released, but I did re-record that whole thing as I said, so you're gonna hear a new version of it and I'm excited about it. The sixth song on the album is Can't Let It Go. The version that I did release before is what it's going to sound like again, but I am going to be adding some different colours. I'm going to make it a little bit different, but it's going to sound the same as what you have heard. If you did hear it when I released it in the 24 hours that it was up. Oh my god, there's a rat in my backyard. Oh, ha! <gasps> I used to have a pet rat called Susie. I loved Susie. She was so cute. I like rats and mice. My mom did get rid of Susie because she was biting my brother. She bit my brother, she made him bleed. My mom got rid of her while I was at school. I came home and Susie wasn't there and I said, why is Susie not here? And mom said, because I got rid of her and I cried. It was a sad event. I love rats. I think they're so cute. But I don't want one in my unit because I'm alone and I don't know how to deal with that. I had a bee in my unit yesterday and I haven't been that scared in a very, very long time. And there are times where I feel like I'm being broken into. So for me to get as scared as I did over a bee is fucking ridiculous. I have a phobia of bees. Living alone makes you man up. Like I think I've manned the fuck up living here. I have to really be brave sometimes. If that rat comes in here, I don't know how to handle that. I'll just do like the lava game where you just jump from bits of furniture. That's just gonna be me for the next month. I did think I saw something in the backyard the other day. Oh my God, how long has that rat been there? I've had a friend this whole time and I didn't even know. Sixth, seventh song, a poem. It's a spoken word poem. I don't know how I feel about it. It's dedic- Oh, there's a bird. Oh, I think it's looking at me. Oh, get the rat. <laughs> this poem is about someone in my past that greatly affected who I am right now. God, this whole album just makes me sad, honestly. It's about my past, so it's... <laughs> it makes me sad, but it's definitely healing for me. The poem is about a very big feeling and fear and moment in my past, so I do want to include it, and I'm actually incredibly proud of the poem as well. If you didn't know, I am releasing a book of poetry. I'm hoping to sell it as an ebook, and I'm hoping to get it printed and published, and hoping to sell it in bookstores. This is possible. You can do that by yourself, which I am learning. One of my patrons is actually helping me to learn about it. I am releasing a book of poetry. I know everyone is doing that now and it's a very Instagram thing, but I've been writing these poems since I was 17 and I'm compiling them into a book. So if you're interested, stay tuned. This poem is from my book that I'm making. That poem in particular feels right for the album but I'm also not sure how I feel about releasing a spoken word on an album, but I feel like I'm gonna end up doing it. I've wanted to put a poem on my first album for a very long time, and I've thought that the intro to the album might even be a poem. I just don't know how confident I'm gonna feel about doing that on a, an album, because I know I'm gonna get more and more terrified before releasing it. It's, this is so scary. I'm gonna be releasing such a personal thing. It's still, terrifies me to think about, but no going back. The next one is a song that I actually haven't written yet, so I don't know how that's gonna go. Um, I need to get this whole thing done by Christmas. So yeah, I don't know how that's gonna go, but there's a vocal line that I really, 
love and I wrote guitar to it as well and it just, I know it's gonna become a song someday. It's called There's No Sleep For Wolves. I know that that song is gonna be something for me one day and I'm so excited. I just don't know if it's gonna be on the album. It's so strange that you can feel things like this. I don't know, I'm just predicting. I honestly do feel like that song you wait. You hear that song when it's released. I think it's gonna be something really good. And I only have a line, a vocal line with guitar right now, but I have a good feeling about that song. Seventh, eighth song? I think the eighth song. Um, number nine is the interlude. And this has already been recorded. I am so proud of it. Oh my God. I am so proud of the interlude so much. I did percussion on Ableton. I think one of the most daunting things is putting an emphasis on percussion when you don't know percussion. I was just mucking around one day making a beat. I was just mucking around making a beat. I was just trying to figure out Ableton. All of a sudden it just ended up becoming this thing that I really didn't think I could do. I didn't know that I had a kind of ear for percussion. It's just not something I've ever done and then to make an interlude that is purely based around the percussion which i'm sure you didn't expect from me and i'm sure you're going to be a little bit like what the fuck is this i don't know how well i did with it because it is percussion it is a whole different world for me i'm proud of it i think that was one of the first things i did on ableton just mucking around trying to figure out how it worked so the fact that it's on the album and it's one of the tracks that i'm most proud of is insane um I keep looking for the rap. The interlude was actually also going to be the start of another song. I thought this sounds like an interlude, it sounds like a track in itself. It needs to be separate. That interlude then goes into a song that's called There's a Boy. I think I'm calling it There's a Boy, but I also don't know if that name's gonna change because I feel like it might. I need to do so much to that track, but the interlude flows into another song. So that track to me is quite crucial to the album. I hope that it ends up being something I'm proud enough to put on the album, but I need to do a lot of work to that. That track is quite crucial to me as a perfectionist. It doesn't need to be on the album, but I feel like it would be empty without that track. But I do have until Christmas, it's only March. I just, in my head, I'm like, I need to do this and this and this and this. Fuck me, no. <laughs> I am so scared. No matter what, I'm releasing this album at Christmas. Even if it's not finished, I am releasing the album on Christmas. So I need to get my shit together. I don't want to release an album that I feel is not finished. I'm putting this deadline on myself because if I don't, I'm not going to fucking finish it. I know myself. I want to enter new phases in my life and be able to make an album about that phase and those chapters. And I can't Okay. I can't move forward if an album about the past is continuously just sitting there and not being finished. So I need to do this for myself and... Um... Oh no, battery! No! Oh. Boo! Bear with me a mo. We are so close to the end of the album. Well, to discussing it. To discussing. We are so close to discussing the end part of the album. Nowhere near fucking recording it, but that's fine. <laughs> Although, oh, also look at this hair. It is an effective scarf. <laughs> it's actually quite cozy. I'm so doing this when I have long hair. This is not my hair. If you're new here. Sadly, no. I can pretend. I feel like a princess with this, honestly. This is also the next day, by the way. I have aged since starting filming this video. Let me put on my grandma knit, because I have aged. It's been a while. The next song is called You Won't Get To Love Her. And this is also already released, and you can save it on my Spotify if you would like to. It's also on my YouTube channel. There is a lyric video that I created for several of my songs on my YouTube channel. Go have a look. It's in my album playlist. Oh my god, okay. I think, I can't remember if it's this one or the next one, which is Waiting To Be Found Again, that I'm really not happy with production-wise. The first track that I did on Ableton was either You Won't Get To Love Her or Waiting To Be Found Again. Um, I can't remember. Wait, I wanna know. I can't remember which one was the first one I did out of those. Also, I dyed my roots. Don't look at- this is not shit on my head. <laughs> I can't remember which one I did first. Oh boy. Alright. Um, 
Yes, anyway, don't mind me. I'm just sitting here like gibbering away. I'm sure you can't understand what I'm talking about right now. I can't. The second to last track on the album is You Won't Get to Love Her. That was either the first or second track I did on Ableton. Something I wish that I could redo level wise. I really messed up the levels. I have done what I can to redo it. But yeah, those two last songs don't sound the best sound engineering wise, production mastering wise, so forgive me when you hear those songs because they were the first full songs I've ever done on Ableton and I can't find the original track files so I can't re-edit them which is so annoying. I clearly didn't know what I was doing, I didn't save the original track files. I've learned since then, why am I just holding all of this, all of this? I will show, let me show you how long this is. Look at this, that is ridiculous. It's my bum! Goes to my bum! Anyway, I honestly feel like Jasmine from Aladdin wearing this. Yeah, so the last two tracks are You Won't Get to Love Her and then Waiting to Be Found Again. Waiting to Be Found Again is it's a song about closure. It kind of foreshadows the next chapter in my life, which is just perfect. It's the, the placement of this song is the end of the album and it's so perfect to be the end song. This is where I'm at. I've had seven tracks completed. They're sitting there. They're sitting on my computer. In this little folder here, this is my finished album folder. They're all just sitting there waiting for the rest to come and meet with them, have a chat, <laughs> get to know each other. Hi, this is where I'm at. Hi, first album. It's on the way. It's coming to you. Some, sometime, Christmas. Ugh, this is just a process <laughs> this is just a lot. <laughs> I think the most scary part about this is I now have friends and I am so scared to hear what they think about my album. I think that's the main reason I'm actually starting to get scared because people around me, people close to me, are going to have opinions about my music and my album. There are two butterflies dancing around and it's so cute. Oh my god, they're so cute. You look great together. I get so distracted by the <laughs> most silly things. I'm only really scared about the people I know having opinions that might hurt me to hear. I know they wouldn't be mean about it, but I just, I'm scared that they won't like it. That's the only thing I'm scared about, really. Like, strangers having bad opinions about my album doesn't affect me. The people that I care about in my personal life having bad opinions about my music is something I'm gonna care about and it's scary, but it's fine. It's my first album. That's my excuse. If it's bad, <laughs> if you don't like it, it's my first album. Cut me some slack. Gonna be fine. We're gonna be fine. Ah. <laughs> ah. I will see you soon for another album update. Oh, nothing. Drank it. See you soon. I hope you're excited. Let me know. Let me know if you're excited. Let me know. Oh boy, I have an album coming out on Christmas. Oh boy. Oh boy. Okay. <laughs> I will see you soon.